Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Q3 nine-month Cisco 24 earnings conference call for Trevani Engineering and Industries Limited. The overall performance of the company during the nine months ended December 31st, 2023, has been satisfactory, with a healthy performance in the sugar and the power transmission business in particular. There were some challenges in the alcohol business due to feedstock constraints, and the profitability of the water business was impacted due to a slower execution on some of the projects, and these were problems relating to some customers. For the nine months, the revenues from operations net of excise stood at 3,918 crores, with a profit before tax of 312.3 crores and a PAT of 234.1 crores. At the recently concluded board meeting, the board of directors of the company has declared an interim dividend of 2 rupees 25 pesa per fully paid equity share for the fiscal year 23-24 and a special dividend of 2 rupees 25 pesa per share. The board has also approved a new venture of the business of manufacturing and marketing, IMFL, as part of the forward integration of our distillery operations. This would involve the establishment of a state-of-the-art bottling facility at our alcochemical facility in Muzaffarnagar in Uttar Pradesh to produce high-quality IMFL products. The total cost, capital cost, would be approximately 25 crores. And, of course, it is subject to the necessary statutory clearances. The facility is expected to be ready for commencement of production by the end of quarter one, fiscal 25, so in a few months' time. It's also noted by the board that the project enhancement for the power transmission business for 250 to 400 crores is under progress and is expected to be completed by December 24 instead of March 24, as informed earlier. The board has also further approved a capex of 180 crores for further enhancement in capacity from 400 to 500, or just about 500 crores. It's important to note this is the reason and rationale for this approval at this stage is because of the longer time periods in acquiring some of the uh, very highly specialized equipments uh, from some of the European vendors. So some of the highly specialized machines have uh, order timelines of 12 to 18 months, and therefore the impact, the majority impact of the um, 180 crore investment approved by the board will be felt in fiscal 26. It is also noted by the board that the commissioning of the new multi feed distillery at Raninangal is expected by March 31st, 2024, just a few months late. Furthermore, considering present government policy and challenges in the availability of, uh, of the permitted grains at viable procurement prices for distillery operations, it's been decided to keep the implementation of the new proposed distillery expansion at Sabitgarh in abeyance. So any further development, of course, will be intimated in due course. The board has also approved the entering into a uh, share purchase agreement to acquire 25.43% stake of Sir Shadilal Enterprises at a total value of 35 crores. The proposed acquisition affords an opportunity for us to expand our sugar and distillery business. It is a strategic fit for us, as it is as this, the sugar factory, uh, the company, of course, has a sugar factory and a 100 KLPD distillery, and the sugar factory is in the vicinity of some of our sugar units. And we've evaluated the opportunity of the company, and we believe that it is capable of being turned around by us in a very short period of time. The equity value of the target has been determined at 138 crores based on our estimated value of assets and liabilities, which is primarily from information in the public domain and our knowledge of the target being in the same area, um, geographical area of operation. Right. Uh, returning to the highlights of the businesses, for our sugar and alcohol business, there's better performance in terms of crush and recovery during Q3 in the ongoing sugar season. The crush 
uh, is higher uh, by 6.7%, and the recovery is higher by 38 basis points on a um, net basis uh, after considering the diversion of sugar and tea heavy uh, uh, molasses. And the sugar production is higher by 11%. Now, that is, of course, extremely encouraging and higher than what one had forecast uh, and spoken uh, to you all about uh, at our previous conversation. So we're quite happy about about the improvement in, in, in total sugar production. The higher sugar realizations have helped the sugar segment profitability and largely offset the impact of lower sales um, and the increased cost because of the revision in SAP. Alcohol sales of 13.8 crore liters in fiscal, yeah, for the nine months of fiscal 24, an increase of 8.3% over the previous corresponding period. The segment profitability has been impacted due to low margin maize operations in substitution um, using the surplus food grains from the SCI. SCI rights is what was being used for in the previous corresponding period. Looking at the engineering business, there's been a robust increase in both turnover and profitability in the power transmission business, growing at 34% and just under 45% year-on-year -year for turnover and profitability, respectively, for the nine-month period. The order booking um, also increased by just a shade under 25%, uh, increased by 240.5 crores and closed at 297.2 crores. The outstanding order book for the entire uh, engineering business, including our water business, stands at 1,546 crores. The profit before tax for the company declined by 8.4% in Q3 fiscal 24 and was flat for the nine months period. Uh, this is because, as I mentioned, the sugar business reported higher profitability due to higher realization prices. Um, the bar transmission business also reported significantly higher profitability commensurate with the higher turnover. And there was a decline in profitability of distillery operations, as I mentioned, with the substitution of maize for SCI rice. And the segment profitability of the water business um, was in line with the lower turnover of the business. The gross debt of the company, as on the 31st of December 23, is 515 crores compared to 389 crores. However, after considering surplus funds, which are held in SD, of 369 crores, the net debt is 145.5 crores. The overall cost of funds is 5.25% for Q3 fiscal 24 versus 4.75 in the previous corresponding period. Looking at our sugar operations, as I had mentioned, the realizations have led to much improved contribution margins and have offset the impact of lower sales volume and increased paid price. Uh, it's important to mention that the sugar inventories on December 31st, 23 were 29.63 lakh quintals, valued at 36.6 rupees per kilo. And this was a staggering 24% higher than the same situation on the 31st of December 22, where the inventory was 23.93 lakh quintals. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the decisions to produce more sugar, and I will be covering that in, in our industry update of the alcohol business, etc., have allowed us to be able to produce significantly larger quantities of sugar. Of course, the higher recovery uh, and higher yields have also helped, and higher processing capability of the company has also helped quite substantially. The quarter operations achieved the sales of 30.6 crores for the nine-month period. The current realization um, is perhaps slightly lower than, than uh, late November, uh, early December, but still stands at a, at, at a fairly healthy uh, 38.80 to 39 rupees for, um, for refined sugar per kilo. And sulfidation sugar is, of course, lower, approximately 38 uh, 40 to 38.50 um, per quintal, actually. Uh, for the quarter, the sugarcane crush was 3.33 million tons, a 6.7% increase. The net recovery, of course, was higher uh, at 9.76 versus 9.36 in the previous corresponding period, with sugar production being 10.9, 11% higher. 
The gross recovery, which is also important to, to give you a, a flavor of difference, uh, because it gives you an impact of, uh, of what this quarter and, and, and Q1 uh, of the next fiscal year, the, the last bit of the sugar season has in store. The, the gross recovery for the company stands at 11% for the quarter under review, which is 0.39 uh, basis points higher than 11.6, sorry, 10.61 for the previous corresponding quarter. The average blended realization uh, for the quarter was 6.4% higher at 3,952 rupees per quarter. Um, and of course, this led to a PBT increase of 5.5% up to 120 crores. On the 18th of January 2024, the government of Uttar Pradesh revised the state advised price of sugarcane and increased all three, the general, the early, and the rejected variety by 20 rupees per quintal. And therefore, early variety has been revised to 370 rupees per quintal. General variety sugarcane has been increased from 340 to 360 rupees per quintal. And the rejected varieties have been increased from 335 to 355 rupees per quintal. The press note also notified that the transportation charges for cane from out centers has been improved, has been increased by 45 pesa to 9 rupees per quintal. So that is a little bit of a, a benefit, actually, uh, to the industry. Just before that, on the 15th of December 23, uh, the Department of Food and Public Distribution issued directions in view of the lower, expected lower sugar production of the country to limit the sugar sacrifice through bee heavy and sugar cane juice route to 1.7 million metric tons of sugar, and this was compared to 3.8 million metric tons in the previous season. Um, and I think it came as a bit of a surprise uh, to, the, to the industry. And of course, it has impacted distillery operations and will continue to impact distillery operations, not just for Thraveni, but for the nation uh, as a whole. The sugar balance sheet for the season uh, looks reasonably healthy, according to ISMA, with an opening balance on the 1st of October 23 of about 5.6 million tons. The net sugar production now stands revised at 31.7 million tons, potentially with an upward bias, and domestic sales um, or consumption of about 28.5 million tons. And so we're looking at a closing stock on the 30th of September 24 at a very healthy 8.8 .8 million metric tons. Uh, and this, of course, is after considering 1.7 million uh, tons of sugar diversion towards ethanol. And what I'm trying to say is that actually we have sufficient sugar in the country. Um, and regardless of what the outcome of uh, um, the rains are over the summer months, I think the, the higher balance is something that we can all be very comforted with in terms of uh, providing enough sugar for consumers within the country. And not just this year, but also for the next year. Amongst the major sugarcane sugar producing states, we expect Uttar Pradesh to produce between 12 to 14 percent sugar increase in sugar output for this season. In Maharashtra, it declined by about 15 percent, um, and Karnataka by about 22 percent, perhaps 20, uh, between 22 and 24 percent, leading to an overall 3 to 4 percent lower net sugar production for the country. The government has also imposed 50% duties on the export of molasses, which is effective from the 18th of January 2024. Very quickly, looking at the international scenario, we're looking uh, at a surplus production uh, globally. We're looking at a record output from Brazil um, with um, estimates coming in above 43 million tons of sugar for the 24-25 uh, season. We're looking at the Thai sugar crop to remain subdued, and this is important because for you know, when one looks at the regional balances uh, and regional supplies of sugar, not just this year, but going forward, etc., uh, Thailand is expected to be subdued for this sugar season. Uh, and international sugar prices still remain robust. After a considerable period of weakness so in recent weeks, we've seen uh, prices rebound. And on the 24th of January, the New York number 11 contract was trading at about 24.5 cents per pound, and the number five contract had rebounded to, to just about $285 per metric ton. Um, of course, it's off from the recent highs of 
of approximately $760, which was in November 2020, which is still a very robust level. Turning towards our alcohol business, during the quarter, the profitability of the distillery operations has been impacted um, due to low margin maize operations and in substitution for FCI rice. Maize operations will also lead, as I had mentioned in our last call, to lower capacity utilization and therefore resulting in slightly lower uh, production. The issue of lower capacity utilization is being technically resolved for us to be able to enhance our capacities through some very simple um, uh, changes in the production systems. The increase of transfer price of B-heavy molasses by 100 rupees per quintal is subsequent to the increase in the SAP, and the increase in statutory fees of ethanol has also led to some lower profitability. The net turnover of, uh, was boosted by high alcohol sales of, um, for our IML business, uh, and that was very encouraging and a, and, a, and a big bright spot within our alcohol operations. During the quarter and nine-month period under review, the alcohol produced from sugarcane feedstocks formed 73 and 67 percent of total sales volumes, respectively. In the previous corresponding quarter and nine months, the alcohol produced from sugarcane-based feedstocks formed 64 percent and 79 percent of total volumes, respectively. So I think it's important to mention very clearly that you know this is a concerted decision to produce more sugar, and as this season transpires, of course, there will be more greater quantum of sugar that will be produced since we will be making sea heavy molasses at six of our seven sugar factories for the course of this season. Uh, the inventories will be higher, and sugar prices are, frankly speaking, quite robust, and we believe that the flexibility that we have uh, as a company in terms of operations has again been tested and proven that the, we have made the correct decisions correct investment decisions uh, in the past. Uh, the production fell uh, during the quarter under review on the distillery business by 4.2% to uh, 44,000 kiloliters. Uh, however, the sales realization increased by 4.3% to 59.1 rupees per liter. IMIO sales improved by 25.5% to 11.68 black cases for the quarter under review. Uh, looking at the domestic scenario, the OMCs have announced an incentive of 5.79 rupees per litre for maize-based ethanol with the effect of 5th January 2024. However, I must point out that the majority of this increase, I mean, this incentive, has been captured by higher maize prices. And maize prices are higher than 24 rupees per kilo, touching almost 25 rupees per kilo on certain days as well. So the majority of this increase, unfortunately, has been captured, uh, or rather taken away, uh, the benefit has been taken away by increased raw material prices. Turning quickly to the power transmission business, uh, the increase in nine months turnover and profitability was 33.9% and 44.8% respectively, driven primarily by improved product sales, an excellent and favorable product mix, improved realizations, and our continuing cost control measures. The order booking continues to be robust um, with higher domestic contribution. The order booking for December, our order book on December 31st, 23, stood at just under 300 crores uh, with long duration orders of 136 crores. Looking at the water business, the revenues declined, unfortunately, due to the delay in execution of certain projects. The business is actively targeting foreign projects wherever it possesses the pre-qualifications and funding is ensured through multilateral and reputed agencies. The order booking on the 31st of December stood at 1,248.8 crores, which includes 880, approximately 880 crores of O&M contracts, which are over a slightly longer period of time. It is important to also mention that we did maintain uh, profitability, although it was lower in line with the lower revenues, but the profits of the business, the PBIT was 6.2 crores for the quarter under review. Um, the outlook for uh, the various businesses, let me start off with the sugar business, where it, witnessing improved operational results in our sugar business for the ongoing season in terms of crush, 
in terms of recovery and in terms of sugar realization when we compare this over the previous year and season. The current estimates of low production in the sugar season 23-24 and 24-25 are likely to maintain firm, stable, and with potentially a small positive bias in sugar prices. The recent increase of 20 rupees in SAP has been well absorbed by prevailing sugar prices. A higher proportion of refined sugar production post the conversion of our Nirmilak Narayanpur sugar unit will lead, and of course a higher quantum of pharmaceutical grade production at our Sabitkar sugar facility over very well for the sugar realization of the company in comparison to our peer group as well. We continue to make judicious investments in our facilities to enhance crush and quality and efficiencies. While there may be a shortfall in production in Maharashtra and Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh is certainly showing a significantly higher production. The recent weather conditions in Uttar Pradesh of dense fog with limited or no sunshine for long durations have had a limited impact in certain pockets on, on yields. But we believe that this has not impacted the plant grain crop and our estimates of increased uh, production as especially as far as the Savedi group is concerned, stand unabated. Looking quickly at the alcohol business, the recent government actions relating to feedstocks have led to some disruptions in operations. And we experienced that uh, head-on in Q3 um, in, the last, in the last quarter. Uh, after utilizing the permitted B-heavy molasses, the distillery operations will be carried out with C-heavy molasses and maize as the feedstocks and this is in stark difference to, to be heavy and FCI rice, which was used in the previous corresponding period. It will lead to slightly lower operating capacities and hence lower production. Uh, and the margin structures will also be different. I would again like to, to say that uh, in this scenario of, of uh, feedstock prices, uh, it would be more sensible actually to make greater quantums of sugar, which is exactly what we will be doing. The situation is under watch. And we hope that this, these, these pricing situations are anomalies uh, and that the government of India will uh, relook at uh, the ethanol branding program over the next few months more favorably and give us a little more flexibility in the industry. Uh, in my opening remarks, I mentioned that our Rani Nangal new distillery facility will be operational by the end of this quarter, by the 31st of March 24. The power transmission business has a strong and robust outlook. Um, we've seen uh, brownfield and greenfield expansions domestically in a variety of, of sectors, especially in metals, mining, um, cement, etc. There's high potential uh, that is being witnessed in the aftermarket, and this is what is resulting in higher levels of profitability. And this primarily comes from the oil and gas and API sector, the power sector, and the fertilizer sector. Uh, the the product business is mainly driven, excuse me, by growth in our steam in in demand for steam turbine gearboxes, uh, not just domestically but globally as well. Uh, the potential of waste to energy uh, through agricultural and municipal waste is going to be very encouraging as well uh, for the power transmission business. On the export front, there's enormous positive outlook in order bookings. Uh, and gaining market share across product segments. Uh, we're seeing our OEM shares increase, especially in Western Europe and in North America. Within the defense segment, the business expects increased order booking from key segments of propulsion gas turbines, propulsion gearboxes, propulsion shafting, and special application pumps. Um, over the, and this will happen hopefully over the next couple of quarters, few quarters. The setting up of the multimodal defense facility, uh, it will also help in terms of expanding our service offerings within this business segment. Lastly, looking at the water business, after the achievement of success in, in the Maldives and Bangladesh, water business is trying to expand our activities in overseas markets. Uh, having said that, the municipal business opportunities are looking very attractive in states. However, there are delays in execution in certain projects. It happened because there's been a lot of activity, uh, economic and non-economic activity that has delayed some executions, etc. But we believe that we'll be back on track in this quarter under review and in the following quarter as well. Um, 
In conclusion, uh, the business strategy in terms of identifying and harvesting growth companies, growth opportunities for the company remains uh, the same, and we have been able to uh, successfully add value uh, for our stakeholders and shareholders. Uh, we continue to see significant leadership opportunities in a rapidly evolving and competitive environment. I think the company is well braced uh, for the future uh, to embrace the next uh, phase of growth. Uh, thank you very much. I'd li now like to open up the floor for questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Manyal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, just have few questions. Uh, uh, I think your crushing number is uh, uh, approximately uh, seven percent up uh, uh, as of now, and even recoveries are better. Uh, uh, can we expect the the similar trend for the full season? Uh, yes, I believe we can. Uh, so we can expect similar six to seven percent kind of crushing, and uh, probably the recovery improvement would be. Uh, in the similar range, right? For well, sugar production, yes. We, I think we, we would have, be happy to look at an, in, uh, an increase in, in sugar um, uh, production by a double-digit uh, figure of 10 to 11%. Uh, and I think that will continue through the course of the season. The uh, sampling of plant cane that is coming is very, very encouraging. And we're hopeful that the, the weather that we've experienced in the month of January will abate as we move into February. My second question is on the on the uh, profitability of uh, B heavy and C heavy, uh, you know, uh, per liter. Uh, but what exactly has changed after the you know policy change, and as well as on the uh, after the sugarcane price increase uh, uh, in the currencies, and so what would be the profitability per liter for B heavy, C heavy, even maize based ethanol? You know, as regards B heavy bulaces, we have been getting a profitability of about 12, 13 rupees per liter. But uh, as Tarun would have explained to you right at the beginning, there is an increase in transfer price uh, subsequent to increase in cane price. So as a result of that, it will come down a little bit, but it will still be strong. And uh, as regards uh, maize, yes, the margins are under pressure as of now, in the region of about five as of now. And uh, let's see to what extent the correction takes place to that extent. Okay, so 12 to 13 rupees for B heavy, 5 rupees for maize, uh, and uh, C heavy, if you if you can explain properly. Yes, C heavy is also on the same level as B heavy molasses, after there's a recent price increase. Okay, okay. And, and, and estimated, uh, because the policy change has happened in the mid of the season, so uh, I think our estimate of ethanol volumes would also change. Uh, so what would be, what can we expect uh, in terms of ethanol volume for FI24 and FI25? So uh, what would happen is that we would be looking at adding another about close to five pro liters in our dispatches going forward. And uh, for the new distillery coming up, we will be adding another about four and a half pro liters uh, for the next year. Okay, understood. Uh, my last uh, question is on the on the acquired company. Um, I'm assuming that uh, you you will be having controlling stick after this open offer and everything. And so, what could be the optimum crushing capacity for this uh, this company? I, I understood. I read somewhere it is close to 10,000 TCD, but uh, the number which uh, the crush number was much lower. Uh, so, what could be the optimum crushing capacity? Uh, you know, once once you, you acquire this company. Uh, right. Uh, well, you know, we can't comment on, on the outcome of the open offer. It's still too early to tell. Uh, but the, to answer your second question, it is uh, the, uh, the capacity of the of Sir Shadi Lal's factory at Shamli is 7,500 TCD. And we believe that it can operate at that level. And it has sufficient cane, of course. Uh, frankly speaking, it has the, the greatest quantum of cane. Uh, yeah, amongst uh, um, factories in Uttar Pradesh. 
uh, and does this uh, company also has uh, uh, the payment uh, means farmer dues and uh, uh, high debt level uh, also for publicly available information the the debt levels are not very high about under 40 crores um but the farmer dues is certainly exists and it's it's about 225 crores which is the dues of the previous season's farmer dues okay okay uh, understood sir uh, thank you thank you very much for the answers certainly thank you the next question is from the line of shailesh kanani from centrum broking please go ahead uh, congratulations sir on doing well in a very challenging quarter uh sir so just wanted to understand a couple of things uh on sugar volume front uh, we seem to have done well against the quota uh, is it do is it due to uh, pharma grade sugar or the volume seems to be higher against the domestic quota what we have allotted so uh so the two parts to your questions the firstly uh, the domestic sales have been higher uh, in the uh, quarter under review because the second tranche of the september quota which was allowed to be sold in october was actually sold in october so that is that is one reason for the quantum of sales the second reason of course is that we had very attractive realizations in the month of november in the month of october and also uh, for for the majority of december as well uh, and of course we just want to understand i just was looking at the volume of quota given to us and the volume what we have done in the domestic dispatches so there was some overlap from the second quarter you are saying quota right because the or uh, the september quota was given in two tranches mm-hmm. one the first tranche was supposed to be sold by the end of september and the second tranche could have been sold up to the 10th of october and we exercised that and sold it in in october okay fair enough uh so second question was is related to uh, it's not volumes uh, if i heard it right last year we had done 18 crores and uh, fy 25 you are guiding uh, guiding uh, 22 or 27 crore i'm confused uh, of the number so so, so two uh, parts to that question one of course we did 18 and this year again we will be about 18 and a half plus 1875 Uh, along those lines and the reason for that is uh, is 33% of what we are doing would be grain based and therefore where in the capacities are limited by 30% now going forward and uh, the second part is that our rani nagar distillery which was supposed to have come a little earlier is now coming at the end of march and therefore we would be adding another as i mentioned so close to 5 crore liters going forward for next year So it is around uh, 23, 24 crores we will be doing the next year. Absolutely, yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that clarity. Uh, so my uh, other question was, uh, I would like to discuss uh, this. I'd like to know your views on macro challenges the company faces, right? Uh, given the present circumstances and projections, uh, we are anticipating that the sugar inventory by the year end of the season is going up from 5.6 to around 8.8, right? So which should be negative for sugar prices in general, right? uh secondly ethanol volumes are contingent upon the availability of uh, starchy feed stock uh, we have no clarity on fci rice still uh, in spite of rice production what i understand is decent uh, fci has stock but they have not uh, released the rice for ethanol production so how does the management envision this challenges and uh, what strategies they are, uh, are trying to implement in this situation so you know i think the uh, the first part of your question which is with reference to sugar prices as a base uh, based on the balance sheet position of sugar in the country is uh, i think you need to look at the you need to look at all factors in terms of making that assessment uh, the fact of the matter is that sugar production in the country has declined year on year uh, i think because of net diversion towards the edp program there will be an increase in the closing stock however this is quite important for the country as there is there, there has been reports of a poor uh monsoon for the next uh, over the for the next for the upcoming summer now that is point 1 the second point is that the plantation of the asali crop uh, 
the 18 month crop in central and south India, Maharashtra, Karnataka has been down quite significantly. And those reports are still coming in, but there's a significant decline, which means the total millable cane in the country for the next year, in that portion of the country, is going to be a little bit lower. And as a result, despite the slightly higher closing balance, I think we're in a scenario where we have very robust sugar prices. And sugar prices are a function of the situation today and also the expected situation in the following year. Uh, and as a result, as I mentioned in, the, in my opening remarks, I believe that sugar prices will remain stable with a slightly upward bias. Uh, your second question about FCI rights. Well, yeah. frankly speaking, uh, I, you know, I, I, this is a dis uh, decision that's been taken by the central government. We're not in a position to be able to comment on the release of rights or the quantums that are required uh, for the nation. So, I was just wondering, uh, if the situation remains what it is right now, uh, and uh, Sachi feast on oil beauty may be less, or the price, as you rightly said, are not that remunerative, we would continue to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, have an enhanced volume of ethanol going ahead as well, right? I was just uh, uh, thinking on those lines. I think the way that you should look at it is different. Okay, the first thing is, uh, yes, with the change in, in feedstocks, uh, bee heavy and rice moving to sea heavy and bee heavy combination and uh, maize, there is a uh, impact on, small impact on production, but an impact on the margin structure. But that is more than compensated by the extra sugar that has been produced. Much more than compensated by the extra sugar that is being produced. And I'm not talking about the additional output due to enhanced capacities, etc. But I'm just talking about the conversion of B into C. So that decision, uh, again, is, is something that is quite important. Now, the fact that the company, the most of its distillery assets are dual feed in nature means that we are still making a positive contribution, regardless of what the input feedstock is into the business. And I think that is something that uh, makes us very different from our peers in the industry. Okay, sir. So just last final question from my side. Uh, uh, how is the availability of maize uh, for our distillery facility? Uh, is it readily available even if it is at uh, increased rate of 24-25? How is the availability of maize in market? Yes. It's available and the, the next uh, crop of maize is yet to come into the market and we believe that we will be able to book sufficient quantities for the for the course of the year. Okay, great. But Thanks so much, sir, and best of luck. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much. Before we take the next question, a request to participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. For follow-up questions, you may rejoin the queue. We take the next question from the line of Sudarshan Padmanathan from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question. So my question is on your investments. I mean, you have up your investments on the you know power uh, transmission business, and the domestic side, we are anyway the market leader, eyeing on the exports, and also this business we are targeting the defense. Uh, I mean, what I understand, you know, is that this part of the business is also seeing a substantial jump in terms of, you know, volumes and should be relatively better. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is on the uh, PTD business. Uh, so my question here is, you know, given the, you know, increased capex, and also, you know, uh, we talking about defense and exports. Uh, we have been running at around, you know, 70 crores or between 250 to 300 crores a year in this business. With the, you know, um, capex in place now uh, and the growth outlook only looking better with exports and defense, where do we see this run rate increasing, say, over the next 18 months? So, you know, typically I refrain from giving any uh, forward-looking statements. I can talk about the capacities. We're moving to a scenario where uh, the capacities in the next few quarters will be in excess, just a shade in excess of 500-odd crores. Um, we're, we're certainly cognizant of the fact that our growth in export markets is something that we are now seeing in our order booking, and it is going to only translate in our revenues 
uh, in the next fiscal year and certainly in the following fiscal year as well. So I'm fairly certain that the speed of growth uh, is, is, is going to be uh, as per our plans and our investment in capacities are being done uh, so that we're well prepared and we do not face any delays. One of the great things that we do in this instance is we have delivery uh, or manufacturing timelines that are the best in the world. Uh, there, there is nobody in terms of a turbo gear high-speed manufacturer that can match our delivery uh, timelines. And so, you know, we want, to, uh, and that allows us, uh, one of the reasons that allows us to have a very healthy margin. And so we're conscious of that, and therefore the investments uh, in machines, etc., which have long delivery periods, need to be made in a time-bound manner. Uh, the growth is certainly something that we envisage, uh, because we were absent from the majority of export markets for a long period of time. And now with that, that opportunity, I think we have huge possibilities of being able to continue the growth rate. I mean, the nine-month growth rate, for example, was 34-odd percent uh, for, this, uh, for this fiscal year um, in terms of revenues and 44 percent in terms of profitability, as you know. Sure. And sir, a little color on the defense side, because that is, again, looking exciting. And as well, when that starts kicking in, that opens a huge avenue of, you know, related things which we can do a lot more than what we are currently doing. So is that an area where we can... Absolutely. So there's tremendous potential there. I would like to add a word of caution here. Uh, and that is that, you know, to have um, budgeted expectations in terms of quarters is something that sometimes doesn't happen because the finalization uh, of tenders uh, is not in our uh, uh, domain. You know, it is finalized in our case primarily by the Indian Navy. Uh, and, and sometimes there are delays in the finalization of such tenders and award of, of such tenders. And so it's a process-oriented scenario. Uh, I would encourage you to look at this business over a much over a longer period of time, where the, the decision on orders will then get blended in, in terms of averages over a longer period of time. But yes, there is tremendous potential. The Atma Nirbhar Initiative is something that uh, that, that we are certainly uh, beneficiaries of and we're counting on. The, the Make in India is something that is quite important for our uh, defense capabilities, uh, and that is why we have invested in this particular business. So, sir, one final question before I join back the queue is currently, you know, the sugar availability is casting a little bit of, uh, you know, ambiguity on the ethanol side. But from a longer-term perspective, the ethanol blending program is on course. And second is, you know, if I'm looking at the IMIL and the IMFL opportunity that we would eventually have, I mean, should the, you know, IMIL and the IMFL opportunity, I mean, given, you know, it gives us the maneuverability between, you know, using uh, AM ethanol towards, uh, you know, MCUs or moving towards IML, how should the profitability in this division be from a longer term perspective, given that you will have these options? So I think you've asked a, a fantastic question. You know, the, the, the point is, and I've been clear, I've been emphasizing this, that we, uh, our corporate strategy is to ensure that all options are considered and that our businesses are, uh, function with the sole intent of maximization of profitability. And that is one of the reasons for our expansions, etc. Now, when, when we look at IML and IMSL, that is, it's not only to create optionality, but it's also to add additional value. And the margins come when the businesses are stable. Um, and, and that's something that you have to recognize. This is a, we're a new entrant in a competitive, fiercely competitive new business. However, our intention obviously is to run highly profitable businesses. We see that uh, our road to profitability will be as short as possible. Um, but overall, the investment philosophy remains one of having optionality uh, to maximize profitability. Yeah. Sure, thanks a lot, sir. I'm John. Thank you. The next question is from Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, uh, good afternoon to everyone. So, I had a couple of questions. First, sir, on the acquisition of uh, Sir Shadilal. Is it fair to assume that you'll be able to uh, do the modernization of this enterprise before the next sugar season? That is my first question. 
So at this point in time, we have only acquired 25, or we're in the process, I'll stand the way corrected, uh, we're in the process of acquiring 25.43% shareholding of the company. We have also launched, uh, as per SEPI guidelines, uh, an open offer for 26%. Uh, if we do have majority control, and and, of course, control over the company, we are fairly certain that we will be able to uh, uh, put in some investments, of course, to ensure uh, production capabilities. This, uh, But I, I want, to, I want uh, you to know that this unit has crushed and its rated capacities in the past. Uh, the investments that, that could be made, and I don't know if they need to be made, so I'm hypothesizing at this particular point in time, would be in terms of efficiency improvements to lead to lower cost of, of production. So it is not necessarily for a higher crash. It is to improve profitability. Now, can it happen uh, before the start of the next season? It's a little too early to tell. Right, sir. Uh, no, I understand that it's uh, to reduce the cost of production because the crash already exists, yeah. And there are possibly low-hanging foods there. But, yeah, thanks for the answer. My other question, sir, was uh, when you give the capacity of the power transmission business, this excludes the after sales. Is it correct to assume? Because after sales and uh, service is also a big chunk of your revenue, I understand. So when you give the capacity of 250 crores, etc., it excludes after sales? <clears throat> no, it, it includes after sales. However, this capacity is a rated capacity. And frankly speaking, depending on what products come in from the defense side, the same facility could potentially produce more but we are keeping the rated capacity at 500 post these investments. Because the uh, new capacity of announced of 180 crores is giving an incremental turnover of only 100 crores, which assumes a slightly more than 0.5 asset turn, which is, uh, seems to be ridiculously low for this kind of a business. Yeah, so it's, it, you know, I would discourage you from looking at it from an asset uh, turnover ratio, and I'll tell you the reason why. A lot of the machines that are coming have long deliveries. And therefore, the effective utilization in addition to capacity will happen at a certain point in the future. Uh, the original capacity in enhancement that we did last year, that the board approved last year, was a lot in terms of infrastructure. Infrastructure is one part, which is, for example, the shed, etc. The machines, the testing equipment, the furnaces, etc., everything that needs to be put in is actually a little bit more expensive. In addition, this CapEx also adds capacity to our defense or complete capacity, including manufacturing equipment, to our defense manufacturing facility, for which we are very hesitant to give a total capacity at this particular point in time, which is why I said it is a minimum capacity utilization of 500, will they, and, and it is certainly higher than that. Yeah, because as I understand, capacity is a bit of a misnomer in this industry. It depends on the on the product mix, etc., which you can finally deliver from that uh, facility, right? It, it does. So what we're saying is that we will be able to deliver um, um, a significant portion of that 500 will be geared products and geared services, uh, including aftermarket services. And a smaller portion of that will be from our defense business, uh, but that business will not require significant investments in, in the future for enhancement in terms of overall revenues. The quantum of that enhancement in capacity is something that we are not declaring at this particular point in time. Right. So, sir, my last question is on the capital allocation. Uh, how would we go uh, ahead in, in the future? Because uh, we had a certain plan on ethanol, etc., which seems to be slightly in, in the back burner for the time being. So if we look at the cash flows being generated in the future, how will we be able to allocate our capital, uh, also dividend policy, etc., or, or buyback in this regard, as you could highlight? So I think the in terms of return to the shareholder, the board's policy remains unchanged. And I think we've declared that uh, even on our website as well. Uh, in terms of allocation of capital to uh, um, uh, towards growth, uh, you know, I think we're in a dynamic business environment, and you know, things will change, things will uh, uh, will come about at different points in time. So, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say that looking at our postponement of one distillery at Savitkar is is any great shock to the system. It's just been postponed. And I think I'm quite confident that the ethanol renting program will surpass 20 uh, EBP20 in the very, very near future. Uh, and we're very bullish about that and all aspects of bioenergy for our nation. 
Um, but allocation of capital will go towards um, uh, the growth areas of the business. You've already seen the the, the board has allocated quite a substantial amounts of capital towards the um, power transmission business. And uh, from time to time, it will evaluate uh, capital expansion within sugar, distillery, and our water business. So if I could speak in a last question. Uh, is Sabitgarh, I mean, if the policies of the government were to change, Sabitgarh can be commissioned in a fairly short period of time? That's like just the added question. Yeah, I think so. Once we take a decision, we will be in a position to implement it within one year because what we have already done is that we have frozen the engineering, we have got environmental clearances, all, all those things are in place. And, uh, and we have discussed with the vendors, not placed the orders, but taken it to a fairly advanced negotiation stage. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jayesh Mestri from Asit C. Mehta Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, my first question, the way you are into a many, uh, you know, uh, making yourself into a many business vertical uh, from a traditional, you know, sugar and ethanol blending. So now, from this acquisition and we you are, uh, you know, spending a gift for, you know, uh, this bottling facility also. So by making that, the way you are also doing a multi facility you are also creating. So it is one kind of new vertical apart from ethanol blending. You are also making yourself into EFA kind of thing as a full-fledged, uh, that is the main business strategy to open up that new uh, new vertical by this acquisition and also setting up this facility as far as business growth is concerned. That's what I understood correctly if I'm wrong. It's my first question. Though. Yes, I think you're a little wrong. The, um, the acquisition of shares is in a business that, that runs a sugar factory and a 100 KLPD ethanol plant. Um, uh, with respect to the second part of your question, uh, with res uh, the IMFL and bottling business, that is very directly a, a move towards premiumization and forward integration of our existing products. We are already a large manufacturer of ENA in our existing facilities. So this is a forward integration of that business. So this is one kind of synergy that can be read? I'm afraid I don't understand what synergy you're, you're talking about. I mean to say that uh, this acquisition will give you a... That's what I, I, I need to say if I understood that. Absolutely. Okay. Because it, is in, it is in lines of businesses that are closely tied to the existing business operations of Praveni Engineering. It is also very close to two of our largest sugar factories and our large ethanol facilities as well. So the geographic proximity as well as industry uh, uh, comfort is the rationale. Okay. Uh, second question, so the way the, uh, you know, operating margin that is being uh, improved in this particular quarter, uh, we should be able to maintain uh, around that trajectory in the coming quarters as far as your operating margin is concerned. I'm afraid we don't give forward guidance for our, uh, for, for our business performance. Okay. And lastly, so the way the government has imposed uh, some kind of temporary restriction uh, and, you know, uh, on the export of a sugar and also some kind of, you know, stipulated quota for, uh, you know, all manufacturing. But so you are into a multi uh, you are going to start with uh, some, you know, multi facility. So, sir, uh, uh, you know, what we understood that in fact of that uh, particular thing as far as ethanol blending will not be that much, uh, you know, uh, significant uh, uh, to you uh, versus your peers, sir, because you have a multi feed facility, so you have another option as well apart from the sugar. So, correct me if I am wrong, sir, that's what I, so it would not be that much be impacted to you by these particular things. You're, you're absolutely correct that we can, we can move between various feedstocks in the generation of ethanol or ENA, uh, as the case may be. So we have that flexibility for the majority of our facilities, including the new facility at Rani Nangar. So that will not be a significant impact by, uh, to you versus your peers, right? I, yes, I think I've addressed that in the previous uh, uh, commentary during this call. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and 1 to join the question queue. The next question is from Chetan Thakkar from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. So just two yeah. questions from my end. Uh, one is, <clears throat> I missed the number on uh, the past dues for uh, Sir Shadi Lal uh, of Kane Arrears. The Kane Arrears for Sir Shadi Lal, as we understand, are 225 crores for the previous season. This season's dues are, have been paid um, in their entirety, as we understand. Understood. And the second bit was more on the IMFL. So 25 crore is the investment for bottling. But over and above that, for branding, marketing, what is the kind of investment that you are envisaging at this point of time? So, uh, we'll, we'll be going ahead. We are competing with uh, uh, various established brands. But uh, in terms of the product development, we know we have got a very good product. In terms of packaging, we have engaged the best agencies. But we will not be making a huge marketing splash over here. Therefore, in terms of the total uh, outlay for uh, entry into this business and my uh, the, the media plan and the marketing expenses will not be very substantial. Let's put it this way, without uh, divulging the competing numbers. And and this is also restricted only to the initial launch would only be in the state of UP. Okay, understood. So it will be more of a district state strategy that you will be adopting as you then scale up this business and keep recalibrating. Yes, it would be a regional strategy of UP, and UP is a very important market uh, uh, as a percentage of the national sales, etc. And therefore, uh, based on the success of the products, its acceptance, we'll uh, roll it out uh, over a period of time to the other states. Sure, sir. So this is helpful. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions, please press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask questions, you may press star and 1. Well, as there are no further questions, I'd like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for the uh, Q3 nine-month fiscal 24 results earnings call for Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited. As I had mentioned during the course of this call, I think uh, that all the businesses have performed well, uh, some much better than others. I think the performance of the sugar business and the power transmission business is certainly notable. And uh, I look forward to getting back to you about the growth that we have in these businesses at the next call, which is which would be for our full year results. Uh, plus, I do believe that there is a lot of upside within the distillery business, uh, and, and that Q3 is, is a mere anomaly in the longer-term picture. Uh, and frankly speaking, we're very much on track for ethanol blendings of 20%, and the government, of course, is in full support of this of this particular business. And similarly, with the water business as well, I think Q3 was an anomaly, and I think the full-year results will showcase that uh, when we speak in a few months' time. Um, Thank you again, and uh, have a good day. Thank you very much. On behalf of Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.